hello guys welcome to today's class so this is our Lawrence so we're going to start um, our lecture series on embryology the next couple of weeks we're going to be talking about different topics in embryology basic embryology all right so today we're going to start with the first class and we're going to be talking about the embryology concepts as the basics to embryology the major concepts you need to be aware of terminologies and the rest that's what we're going to be focusing on today so it's good to have you guys around so this is going to be an interactive class um, a class where we'll be asking questions you drop your questions in the comment section below i want it to be an interactive stuff so it's not just teaching and you going so ensure you in your comments you have questions um, you have recommendations, you have suggestions, you have something you want, you didn't get clearly, comment in the comment section below and we we'll respond to them as when we see them. Alright. So embryological concept, embryology concepts. So the question now I have for you is I believe you've gone um far, you've gone to an extent in uh, when we come to embryology covers some uh, topics. So the question I have for you is, what's embryology? You've been studying embryology. What's embryology? That's the first question I want to ask you. So if you if you already know what it is, in seconds you should be able to answer this question. Now I want to also ask you a question: What differentiates an embryo from a fetus? What can you say? This is and what can you say? Uh, this is the characteristic that an embryo embryo has, and this is the characteristic that the fetus has. So what differentiates an embryo from a fetus? So just a few seconds to we'll answer this question. Now I also want to ask you another question. How many chromosomes do the cells in your testes for the males? How many chromosomes do they have? If you can answer this question in seconds. If you've read these things before. Alright. So do you know what spermatogenesis is and what's oogenesis? So what do you understand by spermatogenesis and what do you understand by oogenesis? So another question I have for you is how many chromosomes does a newborn contain? How many chromosomes does the cells, somatic cells of a newborn contain? Even before um, before it becomes um, adolescence, how many cells does it contain? So I want you to drop these questions, these answer, answers to these questions in the comment section below and I will respond to them. Alright? So let's go into what we have for today. So the question we have for ourselves right now is what's embryology? You can see the stages of development of humans, how human turns from one cell organism, fertilized oocyte, and becomes a newborn, a baby. So the study of how this process occurs from this one cell organism to this newborn, the study of the process that occurs is what embryology is consigned with. So embryology is the study of the formation and development of embryo from the moment of inception, which is fertilization, from the moment of fertilization to the period of delivery, conception. So that's what embryology studies. Nothing, anything outside delivery, anything after delivery is not the focus of embryology. It focuses on the period from fertilization to the period of birth. You get so that's what embryology focuses on. So, in embryology or in um, in every human, um, one cell organism before you developed, you were a zygote. You were one cell structure, a zygote, and then due to continuous division cell division mitosis due to continuous cell division mitotic division you became multicellular organism with different organs you get your organs develop as you kept on dividing your organs kept on developing so how this um, zygote is formed and how it develops is the focus of embryology so the first two months of this development the organism at the first two months is termed an embryo and this is the critical month this first two months is the critical month that's why they are um, clinicians that advise um, the, the mother to babies ask them advise them to take care of themselves eat well 
the girl of their exercise um, uh, develop good hygiene and the rest because this first two months is a critical month you get this is the month where the main organs are formed the major organs of the body that tells that this is a this is a human being so those organs that are necessary to distinguish humans from other organisms this is the month where it's formed this is a critical month so the third month to the um, bed to bed that's usually, which is usually the ninth month at that stage the organism is termed fetus all right so what's the importance of this embryology that we study the importance is with the knowledge of embryology we're able to know how humans develop how you develop so what we are going to be learning in the embryology course is how you develop we will have knowledge of how you develop how you became how you develop from a zygote and um, how you became a matured um, how you became a newborn you get that stage is what we're going to study in this course in embryology all right so with the knowledge of embryology you'll be able to also understand adult anatomy for example you're studying the anatomy of the heart how does the heart develop you get so when you are able to understand the embryology of the heart how the heart develops you're able to understand easily the adult anatomy the anatomy of the heart itself the cross anatomy of the heart you get remember we know we 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 already know that anatomy is uh, divided into three major branches you have the cross you have the developmental which is embryology and then you have the histology which is the uh, microscopic anatomy all right so the knowledge of this embryology helps you to understand adult anatomy all right so there are cases where a child is born with, adult, um, with um, abnormalities you get let's say the chromosomal abnormalities your knowledge of embryology will help you when you see this patient, when you see these children, you able to tell, yes, this is this syndrome, this is this, this is abnormality. Because you have knowledge of embryology, because of the knowledge you have, you're able to know the reasons behind those abnormalities you get. So that's the reason why it's very important for you to be able to know, understand your embryology very well, understand know embryology very, very well. It's very um, um, crucial, all right? So this is the stage of development. This is the fertilized egg, the zygote. You can see how it develops over time. This is the um, second day, how it develops, fifth day, and so on. All right. So we're going to discuss all this. This is the, uh, the fertilization day, first day. This is the first day, and second day. This is the second day, third day, and so on. So how this occurs is the um, is the focus of embryology. Alright, so let's get familiar with some terms here. Yeah. So let's get familiar with this first term, gonads. So when we talk about gonads, we are talking about the garments producing organs. There are different organs in your body, right? For those organs that produce garments, those organs that produce garments, garments as um, sex cells. So those organs that produce these sex cells, they are called the gonads. In males, Gonads is the testis, and this is the testis here. So the sex cell is produced here in males, in the testis, and it's not it's stored temporarily in this epididermis, and then it goes to other parts via this vas deferens. So you study that in your gross anatomy, right? And then you have the female um, gonad. The female gonad is the ovary, which is this. This is the ovary. This is the right and this is the left ovary. So this ovary um, produces the sex cell in females. All right. So this is the gonads. These are the gonads. Now, on that time, we need to be familiar with the garments. Garments are sex cells that are produced by the gonads. We just mentioned it. So in males, the garment is the spermatozoa, flora, or spermatozoa, singular. That's one. Or sperm cell so this is the sperm cell typical structure of the sperm cell and in females is the matured oocyte or the ovum so this is the typical structure of an ovum so you can see the sperm cell having a head having middle piece and a tail and in the head you have the acrosome this is the acrosome containing lysosomal enzymes then you have the nucleus 
containing the um, genetic makeup of this organism, the chromosomes and the rest. All these um, new procedurally contains they are here. And then you have the middle piece which contains the mitochondria, which supplies energy to this whole sperm cell. Alright. So the ability of the sperm cell to move is because of this mitochondria, the energy this mitochondria produces. And then you have the tail. The tail is what is responsible for the movement. The whipping movement. Alright. So that's what uh, that's the typical structure of the sperm cell. And then you have the oocyte. This is the oocyte. And you can see the oocyte. This is the nucleus of the oocyte here. This you can see here is the nucleus. This is the nucleus. And this is the nucleoplasm of the nucleus. This is the nucleoplasm. And this is the nuclear membrane. This is the nuclear membrane. So this whole structure is the nucleus itself. And then you have the cytoplasm. And then surrounding the whole cell is the cell membrane. So this is the cell membrane. The plasma membrane. So you see this structure here surrounding this. This is the main cell itself. And you have surrounding structures. This is the surrounding structure called the zona pellucida. The zona pellucida. And then you have this outer structure which is radiating out from the um, cell, which is radiating out from the oocyte, mature oocyte, called the coronal radiata. Alright? The coronal radiata is comprising of follicular cells. So we're going to talk about all those. Um, this is the. the uh, okay, we're going to talk about these particular cells. We have the secondary mammary and the rest. We have the matured one, which is the tertiary. So we're going to talk about all these cells in subsequent classes. All right. So another thing we need to be familiar with is fertilization. So what's fertilization? Fertilization is simply fusion of the male and female sex cell. But what's the major thing that is fusion? Is the nucleus, not just fusion, but the fusion of the nucleus of the male and female sex cells so when fertilization occurs the resulting product is a zygote fertilized female sex cell fertilized the uh, female sex cell is the oocyte right matured oocyte so the fertilized matured oocyte which is the zygote is the product of what fertilization so the fertilized oocyte is the product of fertilization all right so you can see after this male and this female undergo mating you can see in their gonads, you can see it has in the female is having the eggs or the ovum with 33 chromosomes, then in males the sperm with 23 chromosomes, and then when fertilization occurs, the 23 and 23 combines and they become 46 chromosomes. So you can see the process of fertilization where the sperm the sperm is being introduced into the female reproductive tract. You get during ejaculation is introduced. And then it travels its way through the reproductive tract to the fallopian tube. Then the fallopian tube, um, the ampullary region of the fallopian tube, fertilization occurs. All right. So when it occurs, what is formed? The zygote is formed. And once the zygote is formed, it divides multiple division of pores over time. That's a mitosis. And then it divides the common embryo and then continuous division becomes fetus and is delivered as a newborn baby. All right. So that's fertilization for the fusion of the male and female sex cells in nucleus of the male and female sex cells. Alright, so another thing we need to be familiar with is the chromosome. The chromosome. So when we talk about chromosome, chromosome is a thread-like structure. And um, this thread-like structure is made up of DNA within. DNA and a protein called histone. So that's what makes up this uh, chromosome. It's usually occurring as two, um, two strands. Chromatins, two chromatins joined together as a chromosome, alright? So it's found in the nucleus of the cell. So in every cell except the sex cell, that is except the sperm cells and the oocytes, matured oocytes of the ovum, all cells are somatic cells. So all cells except from the sex cells are ten somatic cells, like the cells of your muscles, the cells of your bones. The cells, nerve cells, and the rest, all cells, except sex cells, are somatic cells. And they have 46 number of chromosomes, 23 pair, which is stem diploid, 2N. And then your sex cells contain 23 chromosomes, haploid, which is stem N. Alright, so there are two types of chromosomes. We have the autosomes 
I'll have the cisco.